Mike Semper, VV here with you for the next hour talking about professional wrestling, which is something we do every single day here on the Sports Byline Broadcasting Network. Tune in iHeart American Forces Radio, Cable Radio Network 2, SportsByline.com, Over the Air Affiliates Podcast, or maybe your video streaming on Twitch or YouTube. However you're joining us today, I'd just like to say thank you. Hopefully wherever you are, it's sunny outside, and even if not, hopefully it's sunny inside your mind. I don't know if it's sunny where Brian is at right now. He is apparently en route on the way back from Seattle, possibly by way of Spokane. And he has threatened to make an appearance here on Fun Friday. But as I told you yesterday, I knew, I knew it. I knew he was going to bail on us. But that's all right. It's not only going to be a Fun Friday, it's going to be a Filthy Friday because... Filthy Tom Lawler has once again stepped up in place of his partner and come to try to save the show. We'll see if he succeeds. In the new issue of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Dave Meltzer is reporting that WWE has booked the 2300 Arena in Philadelphia, the former ECW Arena, and there's a belief that NXT is going to take place on Wednesday, November 6th there, although that date has not been confirmed yet. Although you can pretty much bet your house on it because Tuesday, November 5th, that's going to be kind of a big day here in the United States. And even NXT, as much as I talked about them yesterday, being almost impervious to any sort of counter-programming that will hurt them, Okay, I was wrong. Probably Election Day. That's going to be a much wilder show. And I don't know better booked or not, but it's going to be there. So bet your house that NXT is going to take place at the ECW Arena coming up on Wednesday, November 6th. But going to have a lot to get into today. Battle of the Belts 12, Collision, Rampage. We got SmackDown tonight and a whole lot more. We'll get it started here on Fun Friday after the break. Wrestling Observer Live. Good to show Mike Semper, Vivi, and Filthy Tom Lawler here with you. We do this show right here for an hour at a time every single day. But if you want us 24-7, you can try to find us on Twitter slash X. I'm at Semper Vivi. The website is at W-O-N-F-4-W. Tom is at Filthy Tom Lawler. And the broadcaster is at Sports Byline USA. Jim Valley is here with you on Saturday starting at 1 p.m. Eastern time. And Andrew Zarian is here with you on Sundays beginning at 6 p.m. Eastern time. I'd also love it if you made the Wrestling News part of your day. You know how to do that already. Go to the WrestlingNews.com or at Wrestling News AB on X or Facebook. Or you can watch it on YouTube as well, too. And while you're there subscribing to the Wrestling News on uh, YouTube, you can also subscribe to the new Filthy Tom Lawler channel. Tom? Thanks what? for the plug, Mike. What? I appreciate I'm it. I'm trying to lead you into it here. It's Fun well, it's- Friday. It's not a new channel. The channel's been up for 20 plus years. When's I'm the last early, time you've actually like pimped it on your social media? An early adopter of YouTube. I'm actually trying to get all of my social media channels in order. They're all at Filthy get Tom Waller now. Yeah. Did anybody at, have any of your stuff that you've had to try to buy it like from them? Well, originally back in 2008, I remember after the Ultimate Fighter looking to try to buy all the different domains and my name just wasn't available. TomWaller.com was not out there. Uh, and at that time, I was actually going by the the name The Filthy Mauler. The Filthy Mauler? Yes, that was the original nickname. Whoa, so it's uh, like Taz was the Tasmaniac way back in the, the Northeast there. So that was the filthy mauler, Tom Lawler. Look at you. Yeah, and then after being on The Ultimate Fighter, uh, in a match which I was mauled in by Ryan Bader, I said, hey, look, I can't, I can't go around calling myself the mauler when we've got this on clear video <laughs> that I got mauled by somebody else. So it was changed. And uh, but now, now uh, as I said, I'm trying to get them all under the same thing. So YouTube, Instagram, X, everything is at Filthy Tom Waller. Think there'll ever be a documentary about your life? And if there was a documentary about your life, who would you want to actually produce it? 
produce it? Yes. Who would you want to direct it and be the main, like, creative mind to put your life on the display for all of us? Spike Jones. That really. <laughs> Yeah, take that, buddy. I said, I'll be damned. Look at you. I'm just immediately with him. I don't think movies or anything else. I immediately think of the 90s videos. On yeah, MTV. Beastie Boys. Yes, and like Dinosaur Junior's Feel the Pain video and all that stuff. Far yeah, well, we can, get, we can get the entire movie done in five minutes, believe me. Just That's... have Spike Jones. <laughs> have Spike Jones produce and direct it. There we go. But, you know, there would be a long segment on it just talking about that picture that ended up, was it Maxim or FHM? What was it where it was your face that was, you know, immortalized in that picture of do you got what it takes to be an ultimate fighter? That may have, I don't know what magazine that was. I know what picture you're speaking of. I see you should sue them for reparations here. I mean, look, you got people that graduated. Reparations? Well, I mean, you got people that graduated college 20 years ago, like Reggie Bush is suing the NCAA to try to get some NIL money, like, retroactively. Like, go after Uh, them. I mean, come on. Yeah, you know, what's interesting is that uh, I'm also involved in a lawsuit by proxy. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> in which it's fighters, still not settled in, in which fighters are trying to get money retroactively still not settled but it, hey it's a lot closer to being settled <laughs> apparently because on tuesday there is a a hearing scheduled by judge bullware so is this in vegas i believe so if it's public i will go i was gonna say show up yeah please show up actually wear a placard too with some of your tweets on it just to like you know hey are you hearing me, Ballware? Let's let's get this thing like getting. Should I should I also ask those people to subscribe to my YouTube? Yes. While they're at it. Yes. Okay. And then have them subscribe to F4WOnline.com, like we'd like everybody out there to do. And I can tell you how to become a member a little later on in the show. But it's Fun Friday, and uh, Netflix and WWE. <laughs> off the heels of Mr. McMahon, we want to get that taste out of our mouth as fast as possible and talk about our new happy synergy together. But a behind-the-scenes documentary series is going to be uh, kicking off at some point here. Nick Khan announced on Thursday at the Next Level Sports Conference in Los Angeles that in addition to moving Raw to Netflix in January, the companies are teaming up to produce a behind-the-scenes documentary series that that is similar to the acclaimed Formula One Drive to Survive series, which, what a surprise, I never saw, but everybody said was incredible and apparently really boosted F1 in this country and the, the shine on Lewis Hamilton and all that sort of stuff. And it is going to be produced entirely by Netflix, which, not like the Mr. McMahon documentary, which was part Netflix and part Bill Simmons as well, too. So, Tom, any thoughts on uh, them getting together and actually putting out a really glossy, you know, obviously pro WWE shiny, happy story. I would assume uh, putting their best foot forward here in this documentary. Yeah. Unless they're looking to do something drastically different than what we've seen in the past. Uh, I'm not really excited by this. We'll, you know, see what a largely amount to a fluff piece. I would imagine now if they let the focus be on some of the individual wrestlers and you know really let them be the ones that benefit from this in the long run yeah maybe it could be good but i just don't i'm kind of over it just feels like i mean look it's going to be one of those things that like on peacock that are always very well done you know it's just going to be more of an extension of one of those things or something you would see on a and e you know, because, yes, Netflix is going to be producing it, but you can't have any of the footage or all that stuff unless WWE goes ahead and provides it. And I'm not saying it's going to be, you know, a complete whitewashing of everything, but you got to figure it's just going to be a good, solid pro, like something you'd see on the SEC network about, you know, the, the Iron Bowl or something like that. It's just going to be, you know, along those lines. So, yeah, we'll see, like, Seth Rollins do some CrossFit, you know, Xavier Woods will be playing some video games, you know, I don't know. (laughs) I don't know what these other people do in their spare time. That's about it, I think. 
apparently everybody work out, plays, video games. Yeah, eat, eat healthy. I guess. Yeah. I mean, what what else do do people do anymore? It used to be like they would go to the beach and tan and all that stuff. Now you just spray that yeah. on. You, You'd go you to know? the bar, rip some wines, get in a they, fight they don't with the do police. It anymore. Yeah, they don't do this anymore. And and I'm not saying I'm not endorsing it. I'm not saying everybody should do it. Once in a while, maybe the right person should do that. Maybe not rip some lines, but maybe, you know, cause some havoc. Get, you know, get a mope recharge or something like that. Nothing too major or anything. Just get in some trouble, hype yourself up, and, and get some attention. No. You know, I could be filling this time with what's taking place on SmackDown tonight, but there is nothing taking place on SmackDown tonight. There's a Los Garzas match. A Los Garzas match. Umberto well, Carrillo and, and Angel Garza, who turned into Berto and Angel, and now they're Los Garzas. Yes, and they're going to face a mystery team, which Nick mm -hmm. Aldis himself has handpicked. Los Garzas were not happy about it. Neither were DIY, neither were the Street pop Profits. But there's going to be a lot of fans, I believe, happy about it because the rumors are that it'll be the debut of Alex Shelley, Chris Sabin, the Motor City Machine Guns. I love that, and I love the fact that they went to WWE, and I love that they didn't have to do anything in, in NXT, uh, you know, because... The tag division could use it as bad as we talk about AEW's tag division. WWE's tag division is, frankly, just as bad. So them coming in and actually creating a splash right away and being able to work with everybody is going to be awesome. Let's see if Brian shows up. I doubt it. Wrestling Observer Live. Back on the show, Mike Sempervivi, Filthy Tom Lawler here with you on Fun Friday on Wrestling Observer Live. Will Brian Alvarez make an appearance? The line has now moved to uh, about minus uh, 10 million that he will not be, but you can find somebody to take that action for you, I am sure. One thing, and Tom, I, you know, I don't want to sound like I'm a hater or a crybaby or anything like this here, but I didn't say anything this week when Brian would be talking about Brian Danielson, and I usually don't when he's talking about him, and he talks about the fact that, boy, he's in such bad shape, and his body was going numb, and his legs are numb, and I always want to jump in and go, he shouldn't be wrestling. Why are they allowing him to wrestle? This shouldn't be the case. You know, there's a guy who has had seizures, all this sort of stuff, and I think Brian Danielson more than anybody else in the history of wrestling, won wrestling. Like, no matter what WWE did to him, he was unsinkable. Before he got to WWE, he was already on the mountaintop of somebody that was going to go down in lore of he'll never get a chance in WWE, but this is the greatest wrestler that should have had a chance. He got the chance. He took it, and actually, he got the hot girl he got the title he got all of these things that go with it and like every athlete there is a cost to that which was the body but everything else more than anybody else maybe Lupez, i don't know but like there's no scandal with brian with brian danielson there's none of that stuff and i love it and he should be able to do what he wanted and i thought when wwe held him back because they had doctors that said you can't go anymore he had doctors that said, yes, he can. I was for them releasing him because, you know, even though I don't like it, what can I say? I'd be hypocritical as a boxing fan to say somebody was in there too long. God, it's boxing. You know what I mean? So if a doctor said he was cleared, he should have that right. You know, a state might not have to license it, but he's got that right. But with all that said... With all of this being talked about, and I know it was getting towards the end of his in-ring career, should they have pumped the brakes on Brian Danielson if truly, if he was truly going that numb and having these issues where we've seen it in wrestling, unfortunately, one bump could leave somebody in that ring forever. Should they have? Should they have actually, even though they had the plan here? not let this actually go to the end. You take that risk with every single match. 
You know, I True. think that's I True. think that's where it lies. I mean, think about what we've seen. We've seen Paraguayo Jr. You know, pass away. We really yeah. still can't even tell exactly what had happened. Uh, Yoshihiro Takayama, a guy who took just insane abuse throughout his career, can't walk because of a sunset flip that he was doing. We've seen Masawa decapitated in ring with a, you know, a cervical decapitation. Um, but we've also seen a number of people make it through their whole careers and come out unscathed largely on the other end in a lot of ways what you know relatively so yeah uh, there, you know there's a number of luchadors that can still wrestle later on in their careers many 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 in fact they got the highest percentage by far take a look at a guy you know you're talking about brian danielson being somebody without a bunch of scandals um you know he achieved great heights in ring People respect his abilities as a wrestler. Ricky Steamboat is another guy who I would kind of throw into that God same bless. mold. Yes. Right. And he can still, you know, it looks like he can still move around pretty well. So both sides of the coin are out there. And there's no way to tell exactly what's going to happen when you step in the ring. You know, you could be, your body could be absolutely thrashed and you can make it through a match. No problem. You could go in there you know, having the best physical day of your life and then have one accident and it's all over. Look at, you know, Kota Ibushi at one point was in tip-top physical shape. One of the best physical specimens on the planet. And it took one Phoenix Splash gone awry to kind of derail his career. Hayabusa, at the height of his popularity, landed on his head. And his career was over. So, you know, you can't really tell. You can't tell. It doesn't matter if you're healthy. It doesn't matter if you're beat up. You're taking that risk every time you step in there. And I don't know that he's really any more beat up than anybody else on that roster is, you know. Well, what, it, met, it, like, what, what do you say? Thing, what, you know. Yeah, but I mean, is that a work? This is this is my point. You know well, what I mean? Then, then is this I would part say of the storyline? But, but, because no, we've well, seen even because we've even seen him. No, if if that's what they're reporting, no. If Brian said it as you know, hey, this guy is Bane. If he's actually weaving that into how he's talking about his physical condition, like then that's actually terrible on Brian's end. You know, it would be unintentional, I think. But like, you know, no, oh, I, you know, I, I, that no. If he was actually to that point and. Again, he's got an MRI coming up here. And the only thing I would actually argue, too, on the guys that you named were, like Brian Danielson, nobody, for the most part, could tell any of those guys anything. And, like, Masawa was the boss. Who knows what kind of condition he was in? But all of those guys had a lot of miles on him in the same way that, that Brian Danielson did. And does, obviously. Yeah, but part of my point is that you don't necessarily even need to have the miles. True. Wrestling's dangerous yeah, enough. It's dangerous, yes. you know. I don't. I don't know that. It, a lot of it depends on the exact match you're in, the style of the match, the the other person that you're in there with. I mean, I don't know that really wrestling anymore is any more dangerous if you're kind of beat up, you know, as compared to being, you know, healthy. And Danielson is going to have an MRI because the state of his neck is not good. And uh, Dave Meltzer in this week's Wrestling Observer newsletter, which is up today, fresh for subscribers over, over at WrestlingObserver.com. Uh, he, he's going, obviously, to find out what level of damage uh, is taking place to compare it to the last MRI to see if anything has gotten worse. And if so, by how much. There is hope that he does not need surgery and can heal up strong enough with stem cell therapy treatment. And if not, he's going to have to undergo surgery. And then when he returns to the ring is going to be really in question because, yes, with the miracles of modern technology and, and his strength of the neck, I'm, I'm sure that he has muscle, all that stuff. There's positives on his end, but 
It's also surgery on his neck at his age where there's a possibility that he may not be able to come back. So we've seen the last of his in-ring full-time career. We don't think we've seen the end of his career altogether, but it is going to be interesting to see if he has to have that surgery and how long he's going to be out for. Yeah, and it's tough. I mean, it could be a neck injury. You know, it could be like the vertebrae. could be a pinched nerve. could be something like, you know, spinal stenosis. Maybe that causes, you know, lack of strength. I could see him having those all limbs. of it. <laughs> yeah well and they're all they're all treatable at variable levels you know what i mean but i think at any age you want to try to avoid surgery so hopefully it's not something that requires that especially you know like how old is is danielson mid 40s now like that. you know he's been looking forward to being off the road and being at home with his family well you don't want to be at home with your family while you're just laying around it's not that much fun so you've done this hopefully yeah hopefully he doesn't need the surgery Meltzer notes that the original plan for Danielson to lose the AEW was the original plan for Danielson to lose the AEW world championship at, to Darby Allen at Russell Dream but that direction changed with the idea of putting as much heat uh, as possible on Moxley in the Blackpool Combat Club in an attempt to jumpstart interest in the promotion. This is going to be one of those things that you're either, you know, if you're looking at this, you're on one side or the other. He should have passed it to Darby. Could have been a feel-good moment as well as a passing of the torch sort of thing. Other people, no. The right thing to do was actually try to put the big heavy heat on the Blackpool Combat Club and Moxley because... You have been in a slump for a long time. You're not buzzworthy. This might be something to light the fire here a little bit. What do you think about either one of those options? Where do you fall? I feel as if it's, it was just too early for this Danielson and Darby Allen story to play out. Like, I understand that he's also from the Pacific Northwest. I understand that he's... You know, a smaller wrestler, so you could make that comparison as well to Brian Danielson. But I feel like you'd be shoehorning something and you'd be trying to fit a square peg into a round hole where with Moxley, obviously, he and Danielson have a ton of history. Uh, you're trying to do something, something new, and I don't think it's a bad idea to try to get the heat from the BCC now transferred to Darby Allen in the future. I think either way that they did it, it was going to come off like a rush. And what you really have to look at, like the last month or so of Brian Danielson's career since he won the belt was just icing on the cake. And the real filling was what led up to Wembley Stadium. The real deal, like filthy Tom Waller, unlike Brian Alvarez. He's got 23 more minutes. Let's see if he shows up. We got Collision to talk about, Battle of the Belts, Rampage, and so much more when we get back from break. Wrestling Observer Live. Here on the show, Mike Zimmer, BB, filthy Tom Waller here with you on Fun Friday on Wrestling Observer Live. Brian Alvarez not showed up quite yet. If he doesn't show up today, that's all right. There's always another day to do a show. You guys know that. Wrestling Observer Live is every single day. He will be back on this show on Monday then. And uh, back with Dave Meltzer at some point, too, this weekend. I'm sure Dave and Garrett Gonzalez are going to do a Wrestling Observer Radio a little bit later on today, talking about their experience going to AEW Dynamite on Wednesday night. Also on Wednesday night, they taped the uh, tonight's edition of AEW Rampage. That's a lot of time saying AEW right there. Private Party will face off against the MXM Collection. I don't know if that's the main event or not. Uh, I would say that it's either Mark Briscoe against The Butcher or Anna Jay against Trisha Dora. I don't think Aaron Solo against Kyle O'Reilly gets that position, but that's what's going on on Rampage tonight. Tomorrow is Collision and Battle of the Belts 12. They were taped yesterday at the Adventist Health Arena in Stockton, California. For Collision, no spoilers. Top Flight and Action Andretti against the Blackpool Combat Club. The Outrunners against Roosh and Mortos. 
Kyle Fletcher against Atlantis Jr., Ricochet against A.R. Fox, Harley Cameron against Chris Statlander, and Daniel Garcia and Private Party against the Premier Athletes. There's a couple of other matches as well, but if I actually gave them to you, you would know exactly who was going to win. And also, Battle of the Belts 12, which <laughs> that'll take place after that. And I hope that they do have some sort of very nice tribute to Joe Coff. It would only make sense considering the timing and considering the fact that we all know what Battle of the Belts is because Joe Coff syndicating it out back in the 80s for championship wrestling from Florida. But it looked like there was going to be an ROH TV title match between Brian Cage and Commander. That's not happening. Instead, we just have a tag team match not for any belt, on Battle of the Belts, Brian Cage and Lance Archer, I guess, beginning their path to the World Tag Team titles. They'll face Jack Cartwheel and John Cruz. <laughs> Once again, not a title match, but an eliminator match. Mariah May against Anna Jay. And then our one title match, Kazuchika Okada against Kyle O'Reilly for the AEW Continental Championship. Tom, are you uh, are you ready for this? Or are you just going to go, no, I'm going to watch college football and any baseball still remaining on Saturday? I hate to say it, but I'll be watching a different battle, Mike. Battle of the belts? No, the battle of the giants. When Francis Naganu makes his PFL debut, returns to the world of MMA and fights that other big tall guy <laughs> it's Hanan Ferreira know. is his name I know his name oh yeah Francis Naganu versus Hanan Ferreira stacked stacked PFL show actually tomorrow is this promoted Ta by the Turk it's taking place in Saudi Arabia my uh Riyadh Saudi Arabia Chris Cyborg takes on Larissa Pacheco Johnny Eblen defends his Bellator middleweight title against the brother of Leon Edwards, the former UFC champion, and uh, amongst others. So the co-leader in mixed martial arts putting forth <laughs> their best foot tomorrow. Their co-leader in, mix <laughs> in yeah. mixed martial arts. I, they, you know, they, uh, the, the ownership said, watch our show. If you watch our show, it's just like the UFC. And I thought to myself, I thought to myself, you should try to make your show different than yeah. the UFC. <laughs> you should try to make it, you know, you need bells, its own whistles, property. And gadgets. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, look, and I know the shine is way off. Uh, uh, KS, what was it? Uh, the KSW in Poland? Like that, again, Bob no, Sapp uh, showing listen, up at your show. Octagon, Octagon in Czechoslovakia, the Czech Republic, this past, uh, this past, I believe the show might have been Germany, but this past week had 56,000 people in a stadium at their show. 56,000 people watching an MMA show. And not one MMA site really reported on it at all <laughs> in this day and age because the algorithm is all about UFC number one. And then from there, yeah, drips and drabs for everybody else. I mean, look, even... It's on the cover of ESPN and everything. As we were talking during the break about Naganu's fight, I didn't even know it was for the PFL. I thought it was one of the gimmick fights he was doing to make some money like he was doing. Not a gimmick fight, but, you know, a fight against a boxer, a fight against somebody, just something on its own. I didn't even realize it was part of PFL. Yeah, he's you know, they haven't pushed that forward. <laughs> Well, have you seen a push forward anywhere? No. I mean, it's going to be on ESPN pay-per-view. I'll be interested to see how this does buy-wise, but I believe it's a middle-of-the-day show. And but considering like all you the said, money they spend, I'm surprised they don't saturate more, knowing that you – to me, it's like you have to, don't you? Hey, I don't – this uh, – if you're not the UFC in the USA, it's tough. You know what I mean? They have such a strong foothold, and – I mean, we'll see. You, One FC is in dire straits again, it seems. Yeah. I don't know what the deal with them is. They had to cancel a show in Atlanta. You know, PFL hasn't been able to get a strong foothold here. They're relying on money from investors around the world. So 
We'll see, but there there's a big MMA show tomorrow taking place in Saudi Arabia. I'd be are remiss you, if I didn't mention it. Are you? Do you still? I'm assuming you still have Fight Pass and everything. Yeah. Uh, do you go through it a lot and check out like a multitude of promotions? Is there a promotion like it was real easy to get people that didn't like wrestling fans, especially that didn't like MMA? You could show them Pride, just the Pride video, and they'd be like, "All right, I'm in." You know that the UFC video that they do with Bob O'Reilly was one of the most brilliant things they ever did because it's like show that to somebody, it's hard not to get sucked in, you know, to it. Is there a promotion there that you've seen that's actually got, you know, some sort of feel to it where, yeah, somebody should actually check this out because there's good stuff on here and it's fun to watch? I mean, there's nothing on Fight Pass that I would say is like that. The best worldwide promotions are the ones we've already mentioned, you know, KSW, uh, Octagon, Ryzen in Japan. Uh, is all the production the pretty much yeah. the same on all those shows? Like, it's just as basic as possible. Uh, oh, absolutely not. Absolutely okay. not. Those, well, are, those, are, the sh- about, those are the shows that have the over-the-top production. That no, I, no, no, not I those shows, but there's nobody love. on Fight Pass that's got, like, anything kind of, like, uh, their own thing. Like, no. at least with, like, Hook and Shoot, like, it was fun, and, like, the announcing was fun, and they would have the, the gimmick tag matches and all that sort of stuff. No. That ah, damn, that sucks. Yeah. I will say, you know, how many years ago was this? 1996, so that would be, what, almost 30 years, 28 years ago. Mm-hmm. Battlecade Extreme Fighting 3 took place 28 years ago today. Can you imagine that? Conan Silvera getting his head kicked in <laughs> by future <laughs> UFC champion Maurice Smith. Kazunari Murakami Jesus. fighting Bart Vale. New Japan legend. Think about that. So, <laughs> uh, Matt Hume no... versus Eric Paulson. I don't know. Do people realize how great of a wrestler Matt Hume was? I would think so. I don't so. think anybody I, does. Well, Even the guys in MMA circles don't realize what a just tremendous asset and genius that guy was. Great competitor. He's just there's a lot of guys. Does. There's a lot of guys that are lost, lost to the ether in combat sports. You know, there was a wrestling show that probably should be lost to the ether. Uh, it was the first time that GCW went to Hammerstein Ballroom. And I went to that show, and I know what it meant to a lot of people. And they were really happy to be able to run the place that ECW had run. And it was like, all right, cool. But if people remember, it, it didn't go according to plan for a lot of GCW fans that wanted a lot more out of the show. I was just happy to be in New York. It was an excuse to go to New York that weekend. Well, the show, the show wasn't much, but like I was, it was cool to see a show at Amberstein. I was cool with it, but apparently, Brett knew Brett Lauderdale was was caught everybody's feelings. He's been holding on to him for two years, and uh, he and Giancarlo and and whoever it was also that that coordinated this video that they made for their return to the Hammerstein Ballroom in 2025. I don't know. Did you see the video? Because that thing f's. That thing goes real hard. I thought that was awesome. As far as like again, not having every resource in the world and putting something compelling and actually pretty damn awesome there as a promo video. No, actually, I haven't seen the video. I'll have to check it out. I saw the announcement that they were going back to Hammerstein. And I think one of the big issues, Mike, was the fan base wasn't happy because all the GCW guys jobbed out. Yeah. You think Jeff Jarrett's coming back to give Effie his big win at the Hammerstein this year? (laughs) Is JBL going to come out and, and eat a line from Effie? Instead, is that what the payoff's going to be? You know, I think that was kind of the Ruby the cause Soho of the not fans' giving, uh, consternation. Was it Ruby Soho and Alley Catch? You know, Alley Catch was on that ascension there, you know, and then didn't get the victory. And yeah, it became had to become Effie's gimmick then to face anybody who would come around from outside the promotion, including now apparently Bully Ray. Apparently he showed up uh, at the last GCW show during the uh, the War Games deal. But if you needed alternate programming, they're on tonight and tomorrow on Triller. 
Golden, Colorado, the home of Coors, the quarry at the Jefferson County, Colorado Fairgrounds. Tom, have you ever ventured uh, over to Golden, Colorado at any point? No, I've never uh, I've never tapped the Rockies. I'm too busy tapping other things in my spare time. You know, I'm a, you know, I'm a mean. <laughs> Rina Yamashita against Effie. Uh, that, that actually was booked for me. I'm completely fine with that. Alec Price against Jack Cartwheel. Jack Evans, Gringo Loco. Dr. Redacted against Oren Vedit. And Dulce Tormenta uh, against Brooke Havoc. Tomorrow, Blood on the Hills 3 from the Ukrainian Cultural Center in Los Angeles. You Have you worked that building? Have you not? Yes, I have. It's horrible. It looks it looks horrible as far as the back and getting dressed and, and doing anything. It just, the pictures are, are hideous. Is that the worst, like, uh, backstage you have to deal with as far as getting ready? I don't know. I've wrestled at the arena in Jeffersonville, Indiana, <laughs> many times. And, I mean, I cannot, let me put it this way. There and this is not the only show where I do this, but sometimes if I have a rental car, that is my dressing room. Smart man, smart man. GCW World Title Match: Mance Warner against Cyclope, brother Broski Jimmy against Chris Bay. <laughs> Interesting match. Are, Jack, is he is he just got a job on his way out to joining the Hurt Syndicate in AEW? You know, this poor Jimmy Lloyd. That's right. Everybody remembers WrestleMania. When, when when things went down in WWE, uh, tapped Jimmy on the shoulder, had him come to the back, had a meeting with MVP, and he became a member of the Hurt Business. We could see Broski Jimmy out of there soon. Jack Evans against Sidney Akeem in a match that will have a lot of flips and moves. And C4 against the Garbage Daddies also fills out that card. Let's see if Brian shows up for the last two and a half minutes. Wrestling Observer Live. Welcome back to the show. Mike Semper, VV, and Filthy Tom Lawler here with you to... Put a bow on Fun Friday. Nobody had more fun than Brian Alvarez because he wasn't here unless he was in traffic. And then you'll hear him complain about that the next time he does a show with his friend Vinny and possibly Craig and Granny and Sean as well. You can find the Brian and Vinny show on F4WOnline.com. You can become a member for fourteen ninety nine. I want to push that because you get access to everything. You get the newsletter. You get the archives. You get all these great radio shows that nobody ever promotes on the site. Like the great Carl Stern, the great Les Thatcher and Vic Sosa, one of the best voices in all of podcasting. The man's got a professional radio voice because he's on professional radio in New York. And a ton of other great shows as well, like the Adam and Mike Big Audio Nightmare. A new one of those up for subscribers right now with my friend Adam Summers talking about everything going on in the world of professional wrestling in Japan, especially New Japan Pro Wrestling. Zack Sabre Jr., your new IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. And also about a pretty damn good match uh, between Kiyomiya and Kitayama. Yep, I got those names correctly. Noah, GHC Championship. When Noah is good, boy, their big matches can be really good. But then again, there can be a whole lot of nonsense like Yoshitatsu coming back to form some sort of crazed faction with Daga. Team 2000X. Morris. Yes, Daga Ma and Jack Morris. Should should Anoki come up from the grave and come out and smack Masachono again? Like Not he did at IGF? Him. No, get the chair. Remember when he got the chair that one time <laughs> and was throwing the chair? That. That's what. You know what? Maeda needs to come in and just start slapping and kicking people and throwing chairs on them. That, maybe that. Well, you know what? There's also the Japan Martial Arts Expo, which takes place, you can find tonight, on pay-per-view as well, so... Maybe it'll be a throwback to those days. People just getting beat up left and right. Because that's what I like to see, Mike. I know that's what you like to see. And on Monday, I'm hoping to see you give that poor little Brian Alvarez a beat in audio-wise. Here on Wrestling Observer Live. <laughs>